Hello everybody, welcome to Brass and Bougie. This is Adrian, and this is my gun diary where I share everything related to my journey in firearms. I wanted to talk about my first holster. And how did I choose my first holster? So the first thing is what are some of the considerations around a holster and the basic requirements for a quality holster? And there are two really important things um, for any holster, no matter what kind you choose. One is retention. Retention is all about the ability of the holster to actually hold the gun and prevent it from falling out or coming out when it's not intended. So there's a few different ways a holster may do that. They may just simply use friction and it's kind of just squeezing around the firearm to keep it from falling out or coming out. Um, some will use a strap or different types of flaps. Some will even have a lock um, that prevents the, the gun from coming out unless you pu push a button. So there's a lot of different ways that guns, that gun holsters actually will provide retention to retain the gun in the holster um, when it is not in use. The next is trigger protection. What trigger protection is, is the ability to completely cover the trigger portion of the gun and prevent it from being fired. And so I've seen some holsters that actually cover the gun, but they're made of a soft material so that you could actually still get your finger inside and pull the trigger. And that would not be considered adequate trigger protection. And so if you have, um, a garment or a, a method of holster that has a soft exterior and it can cover the trigger, but it doesn't prevent the trigger from being pulled, then you'll likely want to have a secondary form of trigger protection that's something firm that can prevent the trigger from being, being pulled um, unintentionally or intentionally. <clears throat> the other thing is you wanna make sure that the holster actually fits your gun particularly for some of them that are molded and form fitted. Um, they are made to specifically mold around your firearm. And so you, you'll need to make sure that the holster is going to actually fit your gun. So the next thing I'll talk about is holster types. And there's a whole lot of holster types out there. There's lots and lots of holster types. So it depends on how you dress, um, where you plan to carry and all of those things that are going to help you determine what are the right holsters there. But you can carry holsters that fit around your waistband. And so there are holsters that are designed to go either inside your waistband or outside your waistband. There are holsters that are designed to carry on your shoulder. There are holsters that are designed for carrying in the pocket. You can carry around your ankle. There are different types of belly bands that will allow you to um, carry in a different way around your waist or um, in, in, in that area. There's a lot of apparel that's specifically made with sort of built-in holsters. Um, you can get leggings, you can get bras, you can get tank tops, you can get shorts, you can get jackets, you can get a lot of different things that have um, built-in holsters as well that you can wear on your body. And you can also get different types of purses or bags that have built-in holsters that are designed for concealed carry. Lots of different people have lots of opinions about carrying in a bag or purse because it's not attached to your body. And there's a lot of safety concerns and issues that can come up if you're carrying off body. It's totally a personal decision. Everyone has to decide what is going to work best for their lifestyle, but there are options out there for that. Again, I will just reinforce train how you're going to carry and make sure that you consistently do that because you don't want to be fumbling with anything if you ever need to get access to your firearm. You want your muscle memory to take over and for things to be smooth and to reduce the amount of time it's gonna take for you to draw and fire 
if in, you're in a self-defense situation, that is often the reason most people are, are carrying um, and concealing in the first place. The other thing is you always have to maintain tr control of your firearm. And that's one of the biggest concerns with like a bag or an off body carry. You can never lay it down anywhere. You can never walk away from it. You have to always have it within your immediate control. And so that's a consideration that you're likely going to have to get used to if for some reason you choose to carry in that fashion. So then, the considerations for holsters are again, how do you dress? Do you normally um, dress professionally with a suit where you'll have a jacket on uh, oftentimes? Do you wear mostly dresses or skirts? Those are going to have different considerations than folks who may wear pants. Do your pants have belt loops or do they even have an actual defined waistband? Are they firm enough to actually hold up the weight of a firearm if you're wearing pants or shorts? Do you wear crop tops so that your midriff might be exposed and therefore carrying in your waistband if the intent is to conceal might be a challenge? Um, and then beyond that, there's considering what types of fabric, you know, your clothing is made out of and those things can affect your holster choices as well in terms of where you want to carry or how you want to carry. So you really, really have to look at your lifestyle and um, how you go through the world and if you're open to changing that or not. Because for some people, the desire to carry a firearm may be greater than their desire to live the same way they have, so they're open to making changes. For some folks, they're like, I've spent all this time and money on my wardrobe and you know, developing my lifestyle the way it is, the gun is gonna have to fit into me, not the other way around. So no right or wrong answer, but you just need to look at how you live and consider what's going to work best for how you already live. And then there's training. Again, like I said, you may have certain considerations and requirements for different training classes that you're taking. I know some of the classes that I was looking at, as I mentioned, required you to have a particular gun belt and a holster. And in some of those training classes, there may be restrictions on the type of holster that you can use. So if you're thinking about taking training classes, that can be a consideration also in what type of holster you choose to purchase. And just like anything else, you gotta try them on. I mean, you just are gonna have to see what fits. Even after you decide on style and position and all of those things, you're still gonna have to try it on and see what works for you. And you, some stores will have models that you can try on in the store just to see how it fits inside the waistband, outside the waistband. Sometimes when they get a little bit more personal in terms of where they're located on your body, they're not keen on having a try on option there. But just explore and see what's available in terms of trying things out just so you can see how it feels. I know the first time I put on a, a waistband holster, I was actually surprised at how comfortable it was because I don't know why I just thought it was gonna naturally be uncomfortable. Maybe it's because like when your belt is already tight, like you don't want it to be any tighter than that, right? But I was surprised about how comfortable it was, but the positioning also made a huge difference as well. So it helped me to figure out whether or not I wanted it on the side of my waistband or to carry appendix in the front position. So try things out. Um, you can even sometimes at the range, just like ask people if you know they've got certain holsters, can you just try it out in a different position and see how that works? You'd be surprised how many people at the range just are very open in terms of community and wanna share their stuff. So it doesn't hurt to ask. Or if you have people in your life that also own firearms, you can borrow theirs and try it out. You're going to have to try it out to figure out what fits. There's no way really around that. It's, it's really kind of like shoes, again, you know, you can have an idea of what you want and even know what your size on, but it, but until you put it on and walk around with it and see how it feels, you're not gonna know whether or not it works for you. 
Now, as I started to look into other, look into the purchase, I found all of these other features around holsters. So there's adjustability. So when I was talking about retention and like how it holds on to the firearm, that can be adjustable, right? Um, there's also adjustments for what's called cant, and that's the angle that the firearm sits in relationship to the ground. So for example, if you want the firearm to sit straight up and down, that would be a zero cant. If you want it to have a little bit of an angle so that it's easier for you to grip, put your, your hand around the grip, then that's considered a cant or the angle that it sits at. And so that can also be adjustable on the holster. Many of them have what's called concealment features. So they may have wedges that help to adjust the position of the firearm as it relates to your body to make it hug closer to you and make it more concealed than having, you know, just sort of this protruding metal from your body. So there are concealment features that you can look at a wing or a wedge or other different types of features as well that, um, they can be adjustable. And then there's like the material that they're made out of. So some holsters are made of leather and some people swear by leather and that's all they'll ever get. And you know, that that's cool, nothing wrong with that. And there's also this material called Kydex, which is a synthetic material and it is molded around um, the gun. Some of them have injection molds, some of them have heat pressure molds. There's all different ways they make the molds of the gun. But the Kydex usually is molded around the shape of the gun and it's sort of a hard plastic material. Um, and, and that's pretty common as well. And then there's some other variations of different types of synthetic plastics and materials and um, synthetic fabrics that are molded, all different kinds of options out there. So material is another consideration around what you want your holster to be made out of. And then there's a little bit of style factor. And some of that is again, what you wear, how you dress and how you want to also wear your firearm as well. So, and some of them are pretty, you know? So there's a lot of different features that also can be considered in terms of the firearm. And the prices can range from anywhere from about $30 to $200. So you can spend a pretty good grip on getting a holster if you wanna do that. I personally wanted to wait to spend a good amount of money until I was really sure about what I wanted. And so starting out, I just wanted to get something that was relatively inexpensive that would just let me get something that was functional for training and safe for holding my firearm. And I knew that I was probably gonna ultimately have multiple holsters. So my approach starting out was just to get um, something that was really relatively inexpensive, but that would allow me the opportunity to try out a few placements. And then once I got more clear about what I really wanted in various holsters, then I could start to make bigger investments. I purchased this Kydex holster inside the waistband made by CYA Supply Company. So um, some of the features that led me specifically to this particular holster are the adjustable cant. And so these two screws right here allow you to adjust the cant um, or the angle on the firearm. So when I want to um, test out different positions, I can see what makes it easier for the grip. It also has adjustable retention. So these two screws here allow me to adjust the retention, which is how tightly it squeezes against my gun to hold it in place. And so if I want it to be a little bit easier to release from the holster, then I can loosen up these screws. And if I want it to squeeze it a little bit tighter and make it a little bit more resistant to pulling the gun out, then I can tighten the screws. Um, another feature of this is actually the, the, the click retention in the, the, um, guard. And so I'll show you that my gun is empty. So when I pop it in, you'll hear that click sound. 
so that I know for sure that it's locked into place. Um, so that was another benefit of this particular holster. And I knew I wanted something inside the waistband. I was actually surprised the first time I, I got to borrow a, um, a holster for a range day last month. And it was an inside the waistband hold, holster. And I was surprised at how comfortable it was. I don't know why I thought it was gonna be super uncomfortable, but um, I was surprised about how comfortable it was. And so I knew I wanted to get something that was inside the waistband um, that provided the friction. I didn't want additional straps or any other types of retention that I was going to have to deal with to provide an extra step to getting my gun into the fire position um, if I'm in that situation. And so this met all the requirements for me. And CYA happens to be a company that's local to me. It's a veteran owned company. So that's also a nice benefit. Um, and because I was on Amazon, of course I used the reviews. Like they had over 900 reviews of this particular holster and it had um, over four and a half star rating. And so if that many people are finding it to be um, a quality holster. I felt like it was a really good place for me to start and get comfortable with using a holster and training with it and determining what other features I might want to have in a holster. So that is how I chose my first holster. I'm really glad I got to share it with you. Thank you so much for joining me today and for staying through to the end. I really appreciate your support. If you found something useful that you liked in this video, please take a minute to like and leave me a comment below. Let me know what holster you use, how you started out trying it. If there are any questions or anything that I didn't address in this, this video, you can also drop those in the comments. If you wanna keep following my journey, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so YouTube knows you really wanna get updated when I have new content and I look forward to learning more and sharing more with you along the way. Thank you for joining me and make sure that you take care, be well and have fun. I'll see you next time.